Okay, it's good to go so you can just kind of get off to the side of it. Or that. And just make sure everybody's here. Everybody's here. Put the desk in there. Oh. Okay, so what we have here uh, is an equation, right? That's good. What does the equation say right now? Zero, zero. Zero equals zero. Let me see, I'll try it in the Uh, I know you guys have used equations a lot and you were able to solve the equations really well and everything, but in my experience, there's still a misunderstanding about what equations are even at this point. So I'm just going to reiterate what I did the other day. Now we're going to have this fancier scale that has negatives and stuff. Uh, and is an actual thing in the real world. Okay? So we'll start off simple so that if you had no idea what I was talking about, you will know. So, where are you guys? So oh, these there. ones? Those are five. Oh. One for each. We got three. So, what's this equation? Three equals three. Three. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, three equals three. So, that's balanced, right? We know because this thing points straight up and down. Okay? So, what happens when I do this? It's off balance. So what do I need to do to make it balanced again? Take off. Take on. Take one from the other side, or, or something equivalent. I could take one away, or I could also put one here, which pushes down here, which pulls up on that. Okay. So now it's also equal. Okay. So we put one on that side. Very good. Okay. So this is like subtraction. We don't have anything to take away. If we did it, we could just take it out. But what we have right here is these two here, this one and this one, are canceling each other out. Right? That negative and that positive are canceling each other out. We just take them off. And now, also, if 3 equals 3, then 2 must equal 2. Right? So uh, I can move this one to that. Alright, All right, so now 2 equals 2. Alright, so we get the idea. Why do we do the same thing on both sides? Keep it equal. If we don't do the same thing on both sides, what? It'll be unbalanced. That's not an equation, right? Equations are equal. That's what that sign means. That sign, that symbol is very important. And it's not arbitrary. I think it's something really specific. So, uh, now, let's get rid of all those. Okay. Actually, you know what if you hit? Everything will go back to the way it started, and you can just pull that one and do that. All right. Okay. So this is x. X there. Now put two there. Now the equation is. Well, for some of these, you're going to have to trust that this is what I intended for it to be balanced. Okay, Once I tell you it's balanced, then you'll know what <coughs> x is. Yeah. x is 2. Okay? Uh, so that's simple enough. But here's the thing we're going to do today, and I'm, I imagine most of you are well prepared for it, so uh, nothing too crazy. But uh, also, we have y. So we're going to have two variables, or three variables, or eight variables in the same equation, and we're going to need to manipulate the equation to isolate uh, the desired, desired variable. Okay, so here's y, and y, or they're just going to trust, I mean that's got to be pretty balanced. So y is 4, okay, so we get the idea. Alright, so now let's look at an equation, a simple one. We'll work our way up. So if we have this on one side, what, what does this represent on this side? 2x. 2x. There's two x's, right? Two of them exist. 2x. What are you doing? Oh, what's going on? I know it doesn't like you. Oh, 
Okay. Uh... <coughs> All right. So we got two x. Yes. Two x. X plus x. Two x. Okay. Not x squared. It's not x times x. It's just x plus x. Two x. All right. So we got two x on this side. On this side we have four. There's two of them. is on that side, four on that side. Oh. Yeah. So we have two x on this side and four on this side, so how do we balance the scales in a way that remains balanced? Like what operation do we do to both sides? Do we subtract x? Because if I subtract x on this side, what do I need to do on this side? Okay, I can I can subtract x on this side too, and I just have x equals what? Four. Four. Red one is, is negative, right? Minus x. That didn't help. So subtracting x, that's going to look the same. That's not exactly what we want to do. What do we want to do? Ian? Yeah, we want to take half of each side. We want to consider half of each side. So half of this side is an x, and half of this side well, is half of 4. Okay, so now x is 2, right? That's how it goes. Now I'll try something with uh, several different variables. And the thing is, there's nothing different conceptually about uh, having other variables in the equation as when you just have one variable and some numbers. And if you're going to subtract thing from one side, subtract the same thing from the other side. Add something to one side, add the same thing to the other side. Okay? So, let's give this a try. So, we got three x's. So what's the equation here? Three x plus y is equal to twenty six. Three x plus y is equal to twenty six. Okay. Say we want to uh, just solve for y. Just get y by itself. Now we're not really going to find out that y is a number, right? But we do want to get y by itself. So how do we get y by itself? Subtract three x. Subtract three x from this side. Yeah. Okay. But if I just subtract three x from this side, the problem is subtract from the other side. The other side is now all in balance. So I'm going to see if I can do this without knocking this over because it's going to be completely heavy on this side. Okay, so if I want to subtract three x and I don't have any x's over here to take away, I need to put three x's on the negative side. So what do we have now? Y is what? 26 minus 3x. 26. That's a negative 3x minus 3x. Okay. So now what's y equal to? I mean, what is y worth?
Don't know? Why don't you know? Because I see the bigger one. It's not a number. Well, X is a regular number. It really isn't. I mean, now Y and X need to have a certain relationship. And physically, I do have to have weights in here so that they are balanced. But really, you don't know how much weight is in each one of them. And we don't know why, what's, what Y is because we don't know what X is. Okay? So Y, what Y is worth, what's a word? If you want to know what Y is, and I, I say, what is Y worth? What might you say about X? It starts with a D. Depends. Depends. Okay. Right? That happens. We say that a lot. It depends, and it depends on X. Okay? Uh, we say Y is a function of X. Right? We talked about that already. Y is a function of X because as X changes, Y will change. What if x were, one x were worth, say, seven? If one x were worth seven, what would one y be worth? 21 plus 26. 46. This is 21 in the negative. Oh, negative oh. 5. So 26 minus the 21, 5. Okay? And if I put these up. That's what I that's what I have in here now. I have this with the x's have a weight of seven. I don't know if that's wrong, but the x's have seven in them, and the y has a five in it. Can I change that though? Like could I like take one out of each of these? Now these are all worth six. Well, if, if, X, if one X were worth six, then what would Y be worth? Four. And how Eight. did you get that? Because it takes one away from X and it takes one away from Y. Because well, um, yeah, in a way, but if this x is worth 6, and this x is worth 6, and this x is worth 6, what's this worth, this negative tray here? 18. 18? Negative. negative 18. And how much is this worth? 26. 26. Minus. Minus 18. Which means y would be worth? 8. Be worth 8? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, if we change what x is worth, y changes. And there is no x is this and y is this. Like These are the definite values of x and y. x can change, and as x changes, y can change. y can change, we could just change what y is, and x would have to change what it is. So y is a function of x. And that's clearly seen y equals this. Also, x is a function of y. x changes as y changes. And we could solve it for that. We could get one x by itself. We would just, you know, it would look a little different. Let's do. Um, one more. Put all these away. And let's see. So. So far we have what on this side? 4y. And now what? 4y plus x. How much is that so far? These reach five. 20. 4. So 4y plus x equals 24. I did practice this beforehand. Four 
y's and an x over here equal to 24 over here. How do we get y by itself? We can handle y by itself. Subtract x. Got to subtract an x from both sides. Yeah. Okay. So take it away from this side. Okay. I don't know what you're gonna mistake that I'm putting it over here. I'm taking an x from this side, and what do I need to do to this side? To subtract <laughs> x. So I could. I don't have any x's over here to put. Uh, or to take away. So I would have to put an x here. Okay, so now we have what's the equation? 4y is equal to 24 minus x. 24 minus x. Okay? And now how do we get a single y? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. I want to take 1 fourth of this side and compare it to 1 fourth of this side. So I'll take one fourth of all of this. Get this all stays. Okay. I'll take one fourth of the units. Okay. Now do you see a problem here? You have you have to take a fourth of this x, right? Which So now y is equal to six, six. Four. Four. Six. Four. Six. minus, minus four. Four. one fourth of an x. Okay. And what is what is y worth? What is the value of y as far as a number? Well, it depends on x. You have to know what x is. If you don't know what x is, Y doesn't have a value. It doesn't have a number value unless X does, and vice versa. X doesn't have a value until Y has a value. Okay. If you don't have a value of one, you've got to assume the other one has a value. All right? And a lot of times, this is what we call formulas. This value can be known if you have this other value. The area of a square can be known if you know how long its side is. The area of a circle can be known if you know how big its radius is, and so on. Okay. The thing that I want you to get out of this is that when we try to manipulate these equations with several different variables in them, all the same reasoning applies. This, I've seen you solve equations and you've done well. Okay, The logic that you use to solve equations now with one variable and some numbers apply the same reasoning to having multiple variables. Okay, If you need to take 2x away from one side, if you need to combine like terms, whatever it is, uh, use the same idea. So, thank you, Jessica. That was not a totally easy thing to do. Appreciate it. Uh, equations on paper. We won't use scale because, as you can see, it's really tedious. And if we come up with something like 3 sixteenths of y, that's going to be really hard to write down. the same ideas to equations that we just write down uh, as an algebraic model rather than a model that we use the scales to uh, represent.
solve for r. This would be the same as if r was multiplied by anything else. We want to get it by itself. It was, it was r times 15 times 3 times 6. We do the same thing. Um, what if it was? Uh, well, we'll do 2 times, we'll say, instead of pi, we'll say 3 times r times, instead of w, we'll say 12. Just making these numbers up. Well, without multiplying 2 times 3 times 12, what would we do to get r by itself? There's at least one thing we can do to get r by itself. Multiply what? Without doing that, though, without, because we can't, the, the thing I want you to see, we can't put these numbers together, even though 2 and w are numbers, pi is actually a specific number. But 2, well, pi and 2 are specific <coughs> numbers. W also represents some number. We need to be able to you know, cancel those numbers out. Mm -hmm. What's that? Subtract 12 from both sides. OK, so because of this, mm -hmm. subtract 12. Okay. What do you think? Divide by 12? Mm -hmm. If we subtract 12, then yeah, um, that. That's not the inverse operation of multiplication. Want to divide by 12 because it cancels that 12 out. And now we have a divided by 12 is equal to 2 times 3 times r. Now it's something else. Get it more by itself. Divide by 3. If you divide by 3, right? we got a fraction here. The numerator and the denominator, do they have a common factor? Okay, that's what we need to kind of cancel things out, but to simplify fraction, common factor of 3. Well, I don't really want to divide this fraction by 3, right? What's easier than dividing by 3? Multiply by 1 third. If you're dealing with fractions, it'd be easier. So now we have a over the product of 3 and 12 equals 2r. Now how do we get r by itself? Divide by 2. Divide by, well, multiply by 1 half. So we have a over 2 times 3 times 12 times 12 is r. So when we come over here, we have the same exact situation. We have a number times a number times r times w, a number. W is just some number. It acts and interacts with other numbers in the exact same way that a number would. It multiplies, it divides, it adds, it subtracts, just like any other number would. Okay. So if we want R, we don't want all that other stuff. How do we cancel this stuff out? Divide by all of it. Divide by all of it at once? Yeah. Let's see. Well, let's, let's try that out. Divide by 2 times pi times W. OK. Well. This is a factor, this 2 is a factor, pi is a factor, w is a factor of the denominator. Is 2 a factor of the numerator? Mm -hmm. Is it a factor, is pi a factor? Yeah. W a factor? Yeah. 2 pi w, and because this was equal to start with, we need to divide by 2 pi w on the other side. a over 2 pi w equals r. Whereas over here, you would want to multiply all those numbers together, 2 times 3, and then multiply 6 times 12, and uh, bring that down to this step, and then divide by that product. You can't do that when everything is either a variable or maybe a number that's represented by a letter. But you want to manipulate it in the same way. If, you would if, that, were, if that w were a 12, and you would divide by 12 to cancel it out, divide by w. Whatever W is, you would divide by it to cancel it out. Uh, 19. This equals pi times R times H plus K. Then we want to solve for H. So 
and we just, in, in some way, we want h to be a bit by itself, which means it's not in these parentheses anymore. Uh, it's not attached to anything else. It's just h on one side, and everything, whatever operations we go through to get h by itself, all that other stuff is on the other side. Anything you can think of to <coughs> get h out of the parentheses or cancel something out? Distribute r. Distribute r. So you're going to distribute just the r, so we'll have pi times h r plus k uh, r. Okay, so we can do that distribution. It still works. Other ideas? Moving forward, getting h by itself. That's nice. Now we've distributed those things in the parentheses is, is now no longer a, a factor. Okay. Okay. And then keep in mind we want to get this guy right here, H. What we want to get by itself. Okay. Do some we just subtract K pi R. Okay, so this is a number just like any other one. This could be k or h pi r plus 17. If this was plus 17, you would do what? You subtract 17. So subtract k pi r. Subtract k pi r. S minus k pi r equals h pi r. Are we are we getting closer? Mm -hmm. Are we following all the math rules? Have we broken any rules? No, we've done the same thing to both sides. The things that we've done are allowed, and distribution is allowed, subtraction is allowed, because k, k pi r minus k pi r is zero, and everything has been legal so far, so we're getting closer. What's the next step? Can we divide pi r? Divide pi r? A lot like what we did in this previous example. We divide by 2 pi w all at once. Divide by pi r. Factor of pi cancels with factor of pi. Factor of r cancels with factor of r. So you have to write this whole side by pi r. And cancel the. Oh, okay. Hold on. Okay, so naturally, you're going to cancel this pi and this r. <laughs> Let's go back to 9, uh, oh, what? 9 over 12. Okay. Can we cancel things out between the numerator and denominator and write a new fraction? Mm -hmm. yeah. What can we cancel? Three. 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 Why? Because 3 is what? Factor. factor. It's a factor, right? What it, we've talked about, remember I said, the word factor would be really important. We come back to it time and time again, and here we are right away. Factor. What does it mean to be a factor? What does it mean that 3 is a factor of, say, 12? What does it mean? And what's your proof? You need to multiply by something to get that. Yes, 3 times 4 gives you 12. 3 times another 3 gives you 9, and so you cancel those factors of 3, and you're left with 3 fourths. Right? Because you multiply, so let's be really specific. 3 is a factor of 12 because 3 times 4 is 12. Okay. If we're going to cancel out this pi and this r, then that means, just like with the 3, that pi must be a common what? Factor. And also r must be a what? Right. A common factor between the numerator. numerator and the denominator. Okay. Now, in the denominator, is pi a factor of the denominator? Certainly it is. Pi times r makes the denominator. That is it. Right? So pi is a factor and r is a factor. Let's look in the numerator. Is pi a factor of the numerator? Of the whole numerator? Not just this part of the numerator, but the whole numerator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Pi times what? 
Pi times what? Gives you the numerator. K and R. Pi times K times R. It gives you the numerator. No, you're missing an S and an, an S and a subtraction, right? And if you did this right there, if you put S there, you get S pi minus K pi R, right? So pi is a factor of this, but not of this. Same with R. R is a factor of this part, but not of this part, right? So it is a factor of this, but is it a factor of this, of the numerator? Can you multiply pi by something to get the numerator? Not anything that looks nicer than what we have right now. Can you multiply something by r to get the numerator? No. Okay. So, uh, in that sense, we can't just cancel those out. Okay. If we really wanted to, okay, we could do, since we do see that pi and r could cancel between these two things, well, we could look at it like this. S over pi r minus k pi r over pi r. Let's, let's go like backwards and see what's happening here. This is a fraction. This is a fraction. What do you notice about these two fractions? Common denominator. Common denominator. Can you add these two together? Yeah, yeah. yeah. because they have a common denominator. If you put them together, what would you get? S minus k pi r over the common denominator. You see how we talked about the division has to distribute across all the terms, this term and that term. So we could write it like this, and now we do have this fraction here, and is pi an r factor of the denominator? Is pi times something? Yeah, pi times r is a denominator. r times pi is a denominator. Is pi a factor of the numerator? Yeah, pi times k times r. Is r a factor? Yeah, r times pi times k. So we can factor out these common factors of pi and r, and get s over pi r minus just the k. And if we went this way, it would be like we wanted to subtract them. We found common denominators, and we put them together into one fraction. If we went this way, we just did the reverse of that. And that's h. Okay, let's start this one again. Same thing. Okay. How about instead of distributing, we, we know that we don't really care about that pi r, do we? What do we what do we care about? H. We don't care about pi and r. If pi and r just went away, we wouldn't care. So could I cancel out this pi and r right now? How? Divide by it. It's being multiplied, so I could divide by it. Cancel those common factors and divide this side by pi r. S over pi r equals h plus k. Track k. Track k. S over pi r minus k equals h. Well, that's what we got right here when we decided that what we wanted to do was split these apart and write it like that. We could also, at the end of this problem, decide we wanted to get a common denominator and put them together into one fraction. Either way, it's the same thing. <coughs> I might like this better. I might want to just plug in S and R and K uh, rather than having to do that you know, with pi and R more than that one time each. So whatever you see that isn't what you want, if you can get rid of it, you can cancel it out on that side, do it if it's legal, if it's allowed, do it. Whether you distribute first or you divide first, remember, if you just follow all the, the laws of, of mathematics, um, which all kind of follow from uh, logic and reason, then everything will wind up just fine. Um, let's see. Good one. It's an area of a trapezoid here. the area of a shape like this. And this is H, and this is B1, 
one, and this all the way across the bottom is B2. Uh, and the area that trapezoid is found by one half B1 plus B2 times H. And if we want to solve for uh, B1, How, can we do that? Now, how do we do that? Because there's not a one way that we do it, but we could do it several different ways. How could, what's one way we could start? Yeah? Uh, dividing by a half. Dividing by a half, sure. If we divide this side by a half, well, a half is a factor of the numerator, half is a factor of the denominator, because it's just multiplication. One half times B1 plus B2 times H. Three numbers multiplied together. So, but instead of dividing by a half over here, what would be a little easier? Times two. Okay, so two a equals b one plus b two times h. Divide by h. Divide by h. We got a multiple of h, so we can divide by h. Divide by h. Two a over h equals b one <coughs> plus b two. And we got b one, so subtract with b two. Two a over h, subtract b2 from that, and you got b1. Mm -hmm. Each of these problems says solve for the variable, and then basically plug in a value for x, or plug in a value for y, or plug in a value for three different variables. Uh, inevitably, what happens is people don't want to do this work. They don't want to solve for b1 and get that, and then plug numbers in. What they want to do is come up here plug numbers into all the places where you can plug numbers in, and then solve it like you normally would. Okay. Can you, will you find the right number answer? Yes, you will. But you'll only have done half the work. Okay. Therefore, on the homework quiz, you'll get half the credit. You did not do what I asked you to do. For one thing, you didn't do what I asked you to do. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is, uh, I could not give you that part, right? Um, I could create a question where, where that's not part of it, and I probably will on a test or something. Um, but by giving you that number to plug in, it gives you a way to check that you did everything right. You got to the end, and it still works out to what it's supposed to work out to. Solve it for, you know, solve for B1 first. Solve for H first. Solve for the thing I'm asking you to solve for. Because as we move forward, I'm going to assume, since we have talked about this, that you're pretty good at it. And when we come along where you actually need to do this, and plugging in numbers is no longer the objective, you're going to be at a disadvantage. Okay, so spend your time working at this, practicing this, solving for the specified variable, and then plug in the number. Okay, because I don't, I don't really care if you can evaluate an expression by now. You should be able to do that. I won't be impressed. It's not going to be surprising when you can't do it. What I want to see you do is, is this thing. Solve for one of the variables within the entire uh, equation. Okay. So let's hmm, work on number 21. your brain by itself take you when you don't have the suggestions of others. I just want you to solve for y to start with. Don't worry about plugging in whatever x is worth, just solve for y.
left side great, right side it doesn't matter. We want it on one side by itself. Um, so what's something somewhere we could start? Yeah. I started by adding 3x. Okay, yeah, if that was x, y minus 12, you would add 12 to both sides. So same reasoning applies. If you're subtracting something, add it to cancel it out. 3x. X, we can cancel out that X factor. Y is equal to 40 plus 3, right? 40 plus 3 over 1. Cancel out that X? No. No, why not? <coughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's not a factor of the numerator entirely. Part of it, yes, but not all of it. We could write it as two fractions that have the same denominator get 40 over x plus 3. Do that. Uh, that's up to you. Now, if I want you to plug something in, now is where I want you to do that. So plug in 5 for x and evaluate it for when x is 5. And what will y be? It will be... 11. So 11. 11. We'll get 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, so y is 11 when x equals 5. That yeah, looks more like 5. It's 1.6. Hmm. Well, now we're going to have inequality. Between an inequality and an equation. We use the, the scale over there, and I, I put things on both sides. How do I know we're looking at an equation? They equal each other. Yeah, the, the thing is straight up and down, it's the, the, the scales are flat, right? Straight across. But if it's an inequality, what are we seeing? And yeah, it's going to be one or the other. It's going to be slanted in one way or the other, depending on which is greater. If, the, if this side's greater, it's going to pull this side down more. If the other side's greater, it's going to be pulling that side down more. Okay. Well, if both sides are not equal, if x uh, needs to be greater than y plus 1, okay, so we can see on this side, x is greater than y plus 1. If, if that always needs to stay true, then how would we say, like, solve for y? How do we figure out what y needs to be? How would we isolate y on one side? So we want to make sure this is always bigger than this side. Yeah, you still do the same as an equation. If I don't subtract one from both sides, then if I just take this one from this side and not the other, this could possibly you know, get out of balance the other way. Right? It could, or if we had subtraction, right? we could just throw the thing off balance uh, in the other direction if we don't do the same thing to both sides. So even with an inequality, even though both sides aren't equal, Relationship needs to stay as true as when it started. Okay. So when we solve an inequality, it needs to have the same thing done to both sides. Um, so these are boring. Twenty six. Eleven plus eight x greater than or equal to seven. want 
solve for x. What's first? I can patch this up. It looks a little snappy. That's an 11 plus 8x is greater than or equal to 7. If this was an equation, if it was equal to, you would do just that. You subtract 11 from both sides. So positive 8x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And then you would divide by 8. x is greater than or equal to negative 1 half. So by doing the same thing on both sides, we've, we've kept them unbalanced in exactly the same way throughout. So now we can say that as long as x is bigger than or is exactly equal to negative 1 half, this will always be true. Yeah? It's only when you divide by a negative that you switch it? Yes. Multiply or divide that you switch the sign. Okay. So let's talk about that. Let's. Uh, have to do that. Mm -hmm. Let's say our first choice was to subtract 9x from both sides. Then we get 18 minus 7x is less than or equal to 4. Then we subtract 18 on both sides. So we get negative 14. Remember how do we get x by itself? At this stage, it's for an equation, what we do? Divide by negative, negative 7. seven. Now, the sign of this side and the sign of this side, they're, they're changing. Right? Before we were saying that negative 7x needed to be less than or equal to negative 14. Let's look at that on a graph. Okay. So here is uh, let's see, 0, and let's say this is negative 14. Okay. So we're not saying that 7x needs to be less than that. right? Actually, let's, let's make it even easier on ourselves, and let's do divide by positive 7 to start with, and not negative 7, and then we'll see the negative part. I uh, kind of flip the sign. So negative x, negative x needs to be less than or equal to negative 2. Right? If we just divide by 7 on both sides, that's what we get. Negative x is less than or equal to negative 2. So let's look uh, back at this graph and we'll call it uh, negative 2. Okay. Well, if x were less than or equal to negative 2, that would mean that this value of x needs to be to the left of negative 2. It needs to be less than negative 2. That would be if x needed to be less than or equal to negative 2. Where, where would negative x be? The opposite of x needs to be in order for this to be true. So, if we had x is less than or equal to negative 2, that would mean that hey, all of those x values are less than or equal to, we put a little closed circle there, or equal to negative 2. Mm -hmm. That's positive x, right? x, the value of x. All right? Well, but what if negative, the opposite of x, needs to be less than or equal to negative 2. To the right. To the right, because now all the values uh, to the right of it, well, to the right of something. Not just to the right of negative 2, but like, if you look at this negative 1, okay? If you let x be negative 1, what's the opposite of negative 1? 1. 1. Is that less than negative 2? No, one's not less. It's bigger than negative two, right? Yeah. So 
So for one thing, if we have these negative values, then they're just negative values are going to be made positive, and those are going to be bigger negative too. So what we need x to be Uh, if the opposite of x is going to be less than uh, or equal to negative 2, then x needs to be bigger than or equal to positive 2. So here are the values of x at 2 and bigger than 2. So that when we take the negative value, we get something that's less than or equal to negative 2. So if x is 3, then the opposite of 3 is negative 3, which is less than negative 2. It flips that relationship. So when we divide by negative 1, right here, or if we chose to divide by negative 7 up here, okay, we're talking about the opposite of x, the, or the opposite of the opposite of x, and positive 2. If the opposite of x needs to be less than negative 2, then x itself needs to be bigger than or equal to positive 2. We need x to have values that are bigger than 2, so that the opposite of x is less than negative 2. Does that make any sense? Okay, divide by negative 1, we're switching the sign. So if we're going to switch the sign, then we're really just we're switching the relationships, which is 2. If the opposites of the numbers have one relationship, then the opposites have the opposite relationship. talk briefly about graphing inequalities. And that'll probably be all we need to do. Uh, so if we graph that x is greater than 3, well, here's 0, and here's 3. Okay. Where, where is x greater than 3? To the right. To the right. Anywhere to the right. Okay, greater than 3, greater than 3. These numbers are greater than 3. But well, what if we get to 3, will we be greater than 3? No. Will we be equal to 3? And is there an allowance for that? Is there equal to 3 allowed? No. no. So how do we show that we get all the way up to 3, but not at 3? Open circle. Open circle. That open circle says you can get as close to 3 as you want, but not at. Once you get to 3, well, then this isn't true anymore. Okay. But x is greater than or equal to 3 looks like this. Bigger than 3, bigger than 3, bigger than 3. And once you get to 3, that's OK. So we'll fill in that circle so 3 is included. So from 3 on up. This is great. So what would you say about x there? x is what? Less than 2, greater than 3. OK. Greater than negative 2. So x needs to be greater than, so greater than negative 3. OK. We can say, but can we say and? It needs to be both of these things, this and this. Yeah. It needs to be this and x needs to be less than 2 at the same time. Whatever x is, it needs to be both of those things at the same time. If we were to graph it, we would just shade the, the region in between. Well, rather than taking all that ink to write that down, we could just write this. Because if it needs to be between those two, we could actually write it physically between those two. It, it, visually, it makes sense. And also, we get this from the lowest to the highest end. This is how we would write an and relationship. Because can a number be greater than negative 3 and less than 2 at the same time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But can a number be less than negative 3?
and greater than two? Can one number do that? Not at the same time. So this we would say uh, x needs to be less than negative three. Not and, but or x needs to be greater than positive two. Now, we, we could write this like this. We could put negative 3, and that negative 3 needs to be greater than x, but that x needs to be less than 2. But that, that's confusing. That makes us think that x is between two numbers when we really look at it, x needs to be less than negative 3, uh, and sorry, it needs to be greater than. It needs to be greater than 2. That makes it look like it's between two values. But it needs to be bigger than this number and smaller than that number, which uh, that's just odd. And that implies that it could be both at the same time. It can be one or it can be the other, but it can't be both. So we just leave it like that. And this one we call a compound inequality. Smush them all together. Looks good. Makes sense. It's between negative three and two, and that's what the inequality value or inequality signs say. Thank you guys. Are able to handle it? Do you guys have any questions at all about anything about that at all? About any of that? Okay. Then. We have time, which I've left for you to work on it so that if you do try to solve, especially I would say in 1.4, if you do try to get those values by themselves and you run into trouble, uh, it's good to find out that you don't know how to do that as well as you thought. If you to ask me a question.